Let's learn how to apply this warp zoom transition to anything using one adjustment layer in After Effects. Tip tot. Hello everybody and welcome back to TipTart and welcome to another After Effects tutorial. Today we're looking at this warp zoom transition effect, all done with a single adjustment layer and all done incrementally. So if you want the warp and the zoom without the chromatic aberration that you can see, that's totally doable as well. Um, as you can see from this footage, it is just one adjustment layer on top of some clips that we have here and we have a few effects applied to that single adjustment layer. Now, I'm obviously doing this with some footage of these dirt bikers, but this can be applied to anything, motion graphics, footage, imagery, slideshows, whatever you want. So let's just jump right into it. I have a um, warp zoom transition tut composition here, and all this has is my music uh, in the background. We have my clips that I've already cut into the sections that I want, and I have a color correction adjustment layer, which I'm just gonna turn off for now. So we can preview these clips quite simply. As you can see, quite a simple collection of clips, not really much going on. Basically a nice little intro sequence that we have here. And all the work we're going to do is going to take place on an adjustment layer above this. So let's create that new adjustment layer. Control Alt Y will create a new adjustment layer for you. And we'll call this Warp Zoom just by hitting Enter and giving it a new name. The first effect that you're going to want to apply to this is something called Optics Correction. So you can just type that in in your Effects and Presets panel. Uh, sorry, Optics Compensation, not Correction and we'll just pop that onto our warp zoom adjustment layer. Now let's go back to the point where, or the frame before our footage transitions here, and I'm just going to crank up my field of view and you'll notice that it turns your footage into a little ball. Now, whilst this may look like, uh, you know, interesting, it's not what we want. We want to reverse the lens distortion so that it distorts the other way towards the camera as if it's being warped and pulled into a convex shape rather than a concave shape. No, concave rather than a convex shape. Um, for now, we'll leave the rest of these settings the same, but the maximum value you can go to is 180, which will completely distort your footage. So perhaps we'll leave it for the moment at around 150, which gives us a view at the center of the screen, okay, but all this warping around the edge. If you'd like, you could change the view center by clicking this option here and choosing the center of your warp point, which will center the warp on the point that you click. This can get some quite interesting results, but it's useful if you're tracking or want to position your warp to your subject, I'm gonna leave it in the center for now. Let's keyframe that field of view. And let's go back, say 20 frames with control shift left, we'll press that twice to go back 20 frames. And we'll change the field of view back down to zero. Let's press U to bring up our keyframes. And if we take a look at this now, let's just do it in third quality so it renders a bit faster. You can see that we have this warping effect, almost zooming into the footage like so before it cuts to the next shot. On that frame where it cuts to the next shot, let's give ourselves another keyframe on the field of view property. Go forward 20 frames, and go back down to zero. And that's gonna give us our warp. Doesn't look great though, because we need to add a little bit of easing to this. So I'm gonna select all my keyframes, hit F9 for easy ease. Go to my graph editor here, making sure of course that I am on my speed graph. And I'm just going to crank these handles up until we get slow to fast, fast to slow. So the warp will then build up, flashing in very quickly before moving out back to the normal footage very quickly as well. Okay, it's looking pretty good, but we can make it slightly more dramatic. Um, I kind of want to zoom into the footage a bit more. So we'll take a transform effect from our effects and presets panel, pop that on our adjustment layer as well. And we'll keyframe the scale, move over to off our first keyframe or last keyframe of the first warp zoom transition. And we will place another keyframe there. Let's zoom in a little bit. As you can see, this will reduce some of your objects compression. Um, so if you were to zoom in to say 160, you might want to crank up your field of view just a little bit as well, just to keep some of that warp in position. Let's try 165. Again, let's move over one frame, keyframe the scale. And then back here, we can go back to 100 and do the same thing we just did, F9 on those keyframes. to create our nice smooth transition. Let's take a look at that. Boom, looking quite nice. Let's render it quickly in full quality. That's looking not too bad. Boom, like that. Although I want it to be a little bit more snappy. So what we'll do is we'll take all of our frames in the middle and we'll just reduce 
these so we get a bit more of a snappy motion. Much better. Now, the final additional step, or one of the final additional steps for the warp zoom, if you'd like, is to add some chromatic aberration. And you can get this by typing in VRC, which will bring up VR chromatic aberrations. Just drag that onto your footage, and you'll notice you start to get this nice glitching effect around the boundaries of your footage here. For these controls, let's just twirl down optics, compensation, and transform. For these controls, we uh, want to control the aberration in red, green, and blue, and possibly the point of interest as well. So let's take a look at that. I'm going to keyframe all my aberrations on the start and end of our transition. So we'll press U again to bring up all of those new keyframes in the timeline. And then right in the middle, it doesn't matter whether it's over this first or second keyframe, we'll add in some more aberrations here. And here we will just tweak these aberrations in different directions until we get something that we like. I quite like that. And we'll go back to our originals and we'll just zero those out. So we've got no chromatic aberration, no warping, no glitching uh, on these initial keyframes. Let's select all of these, hit F9. And we'll do the same thing we just did. Crank, excuse me, let's just grab these ones first. Crank that all the way to the left, crank that all the way to the right. Grab our dudes in the middle and just reduce those down a little bit. Now we've got that build up. And it warps it into position and warps quickly outwards again. Okay, um, you'll notice that as we're going in, you lose once again, just a little bit of that warp zoom. So you can tweak until you're happy. I think this comes out too quickly now. So I'm going to grab all of these and I am just going to drop them in a little bit like that. And maybe we will increase our field of view. So it's just a case of tweaking until you're happy with the contents of your footage. Now, at the moment we have this kind of nice warping in position here, but I feel like we need to pull out more of our footage on this second one. So I'm actually going to take the scale the other way. I'm going to take the scale all the way down, maybe to about 40. And then we can apply a motion tile onto our footage, which has to be put at the top of the stack like so. And we can uh, increase the tile height, sorry, output height, not tile height, until we fill our screen. That's the width as well. Don't need it that much. Maybe let's do 400 both ways. And let's check mirror edges as well. And if we turn off our uh, chromatic aberration, you'll see a little bit easier what's going on there. It's basically just duplicated um, the edges of our footage to then fill the screen so that we can have that scaled down section. And then we get that nice little zooming in warpness there, which is cool. So let's take a look at that. Wait for it to render, of course, just this one little section. Nice, that's looking pretty good. Okay. Uh, so the final effect that you might want to do then, this is completely optional, is to, on your footage, uh, in this case, I'm just going to bring up my scale and rotation keyframes by clicking S, Shift, R, and we'll keyframe both of those. One step before the transition, we'll keyframe them again, and I'm just going to increase the scale of my footage just a little bit. Obviously, we're already zooming in with the scale transform on the adjustment layer, but I'm then also going to just rotate my footage one way. And because we have on our adjustment layer, the motion tile, there's no need to motion tile this footage as well. So I'm just going to hit F9 on them. We'll make them zoom in slow to fast. And we can do the same thing on this footage, although we don't need scale on this one, we can just use rotation. Let's go over 20 frames, keyframe again. Back on our first frame, let's just twist that um, this direction. Adds a nice little spin to our footage. Let's hit F9. We could have done this on the transform of the adjustment layer as well, rather than on the footage itself. So we get this nice, uh, let's drop the quality back down to a third. So we get this nice sort of twisting motion as well going in there. Uh, so let's take a look at that. Pretty good, apart from we've accidentally left our aberration blue on 10. So we'll just zero that out as well to get back to some normal footage. And for the sake of this tutorial, let's just clip it there. And let's take a look at our finished thing. Looks pretty good to me. 
there is our nice warp transition chromatic aberration effect. Uh, like you said, you can play with this around, use your own settings, see whatever works for you in your particular situation. And because it's all on an adjustment layer, you can apply this to anything, whether that's footage or motion graphics or whatever. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you very much for watching. If you did, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, ring the bell, all that crap that YouTube makes me say. And I'll see you next time for another episode of Tip Tap. Massive thank yous to my level two and above members, WN62, In Costello, Rob V, Jason Carradi, MP, Art Viz Love, Melum Hoover, Josh C, Ursula Fermanska, The Saucier, Lali Lulelo X, Andrew Hammond, Jenna Carey, Jobs Animations, Ralik M, Narena, Abdilla Barber, Resno, Lone Wolf 16, Era D, Political Psychology, Maybe Sharma, Cross, Kevin Murphy, Mariam Devar, Jeremy Stewart, Tim Fitzgerald, Lanita Cook, and Valeria Ashcraft. You guys are super lovely, and I love you a lot. If you want to become a member of the Tip Tot Zone, just click that join button below for exclusive perks and benefits. for more tips, tricks, and tutorials. Thanks for watching.